Hello. Hello. Um, <laughs> uh, so, <laughs> so um, about Amrock. Uh, Amrock is a versatile, very full-featured uh, music player. And its mission, when it was founded, was to rediscover your music. Um, so lots of people have lots of, of, of tracks. You know, you have uh, a bunch of artists. You have a bunch of tracks. Um, and what, but what do you really know about it? Um, a lot of that gets lost when you have a digital music collection. You know, you don't have your, uh, y your cover matter. You don't have um, a lot of information about, uh, about the uh, uh, music. And, and so... Uh, Can you be louder? I'm sorry? Can you be uh, louder? Um, so it's, <clears throat> it's easy to get up and running, um, and basic, text or basic, basic tasks are basic to perform, but it it's, has a lot of uh, features that are designed around this idea of rediscover your music. So it, it will fetch information about artists that you're listening to from Wikipedia. Um, it fetches song lyrics for you. It gives you information about, um, about tracks and artists you're listening to, and it has a bunch of Last.fm integration. If you don't know what Last.fm is, um, you upload tracks that you play. It's called scrobbling. And when you do this, it keeps track of your listening habits. And uh, you can join various groups, and you can have it come and say, all right, uh, you, you belong to these groups, and so we recommend for you uh, these artists. And it can give you artists to check out. And if you have other tracks in your collection, it can actually say, hey, uh, you have some of these tracks. You know, you, do you want to listen to this next? Um, and there's also uh, radio based on, on your preferences. So it's nice. And, and there's a lot of features. Many are unique to Amrock, things like um, our mood bar. Uh, uh, file tracking um, that keeps track of your music wherever you put it, all, all sorts of nice stuff. Um, <clears throat> so, so this is just a, a quick overview of the UI. Um, I'm not going to talk about it too much. Uh, many of you have already seen it, uh, but it has a playlist, it has ratings, it has uh, some context here, which I'll go into more detail. And um, this presentation uh, right now is, is the story of why we almost left KDE. Um, so the, the three things were context, hardware, and portability. Um, we're, we wanted to come up with our 2.0 release. And um, we have this context browser. And it's uh, highly praised, and, and it's, uh, it's a very well-loved feature. But it relies on HTML for rendering everything. All, all the, all the uh, stuff that you saw there, um, I have, I'll come back to that. But um, everything you see here is rendered in HTML. And generating the HTML is slow. And rendering the HTML is slow. And because of rendering issues, then we'd sometimes uh, hit something where uh, stuff just wouldn't render properly at all. And we want to do something, but we can't do it. Um, so, uh, sorry, said that. Um, so I, I mentioned other things in the context. Um, we have these cached lyrics. It'll, it'll fetch it automatically, just showing you what that sidebar looks like. Um, the sidebar is, is on the left. I'll, I'll reference it later. Uh, so that's lyrics in the sidebar. Um, this is Wikipedia information pulled up in the sidebar. And uh, this is context. Um, so you see it tells you when the track was played, when it was last played, when it was first played, um, uh, your favorite tracks, uh, and so on and so forth. And all, all those things on the bottom that you see, uh, the albums and the tracks, you can then uh, click on and say, enqueue this or play it right now. And so it's, it's very, uh, very easy way to listen to everything. So, so because of these, uh, the, the slowness of this HTML and all that, it didn't seem a way to go forward with context. It seemed to be very limiting. Um, and so we wanted to have some way around that. Uh, we wanted to be able to have a way to do things dynamically um, and to do things uh, uh, with nice graphical effects. Um, so uh, the next thing is hardware. Uh, we could work with most portable media players. We work with iRiver media players. We work with um, any Nomad Jukebox-based player, any MTP player, any iPod, uh, the Rio Karma. Um, we have at least five plugins, that, oh, and a generic one for generic USB devices. We have six plugins, which covers probably something about 95% or more of all the players out there. Um, but the KDE's Media Manager, which gave us information about the hardware, was for generic uh, storage volumes only. Um, so uh, we couldn't see the other stuff automatically. We couldn't have someone plug in a uh, proprietary device, like an MTP device, and say, hey, look, this is there. Um, and the medium objects that it used were very awkward. Um, not to get into too much technical detail, but it had a, had a bunch of things that were in fixed orders, so you couldn't just reference any part of, of this data that you wanted. You had to trawl through it. Um, and so HAL is, a, on, on Linux, is hardware abstraction layer, kind of similar to WMI on Windows, for instance. Um, and it seemed like a way that, that it could help, but there was no KDE way to get at this. Uh, the KDE's media manager used it, but only for the, the storage volumes. 
And uh, the next thing is portability. We get lots of these messages. Uh, Please make a Windows version. I can only use Windows at work, and I miss my MROC. Um, so, oh my god, I saw MROC the other day on a friend's computer, and I was blown away, but I'm too newbie computer stupid to switch to Linux. And my, my favorite, and, and a little bit uh, close to home, I'd switch Linux in a heartbeat to use MROC, but my girlfriend would kill me. Um, so, and, and we also get a lot of people where, uh, a lot of emails where people say they switched to Linux just to use MROC. We, we probably get one of these, um, you know, an average of about one a week. Um, it's a lot. And, you know, so there's two ways to look at this. Would MROC on Windows prevent switching to free platforms? Um, some people think that moving apps cross-platform says, or, or gives out this message that, uh, well, it's okay to stay on the proprietary platform that you're on and the non-free platform that you're on. Um, and, uh, we don't really have that view because we think that using free software on proprietary platforms is better than proprietary software on proprietary platforms. And it provides a conduit for uh, moving towards free desktops. Um, so we've been itching to go cross-platform. Um, increasing our user base is not a bad thing. On Windows, there's things like uh, Winamp, which is free as in beer if you don't get Winamp Pro, but it's, it's uh, um, you know, it, there's no source code available, um, and it's owned by a, a major company, AOL. Um, and on Mac, uh, there's basically no competition to iTunes. Um, so to do this, we, we would need to go to Qt only, um, because for one thing, KD wasn't building on, on Windows and Mac, and, uh, and losing Media Manager and KHTML didn't seem like a big issue um, moving forward, because we didn't really want to you know, have, have to be uh, stuck on HTML for the context view anyways. Um, there are a couple other nice things, KURLs and KIO, which you know, have abstraction of, of, of networks, so you can get to your Samba, you know, play directly from your Samba shares and all that, but they weren't seekable, and that severely limited how useful they were, because you could start it playing, but you couldn't move around in the file. And so we had a few other hard dependencies on KDE, we were mainly using a bunch of helper classes. Um, and, and, and so the next part of the talk is about libraries, libraries, and more libraries. Um, KDE stepped up and came up with all these libraries, and I'm specifically going to talk about Plasma, Solid, and Phonon three of the pillars of KDE4. And uh, KDE4's libraries had been the answers to all of our problems, and in Phonon's case, they were the answer to a problem that we never really realized that we had. We, we, we kind of knew it, but we didn't really recognize it. We didn't, weren't really pursuing it. Um, <clears throat> uh, one sec. Now, I've heard um, the other day someone described the KDE development community as a family because everyone is, is so friendly when there are meetings like this. Everyone gets along, and it's such a nice, a nice uh, group. Um, and they're like that with all things. Uh, they're friendly accept and accepting of our suggestions and ideas. So it makes it so that if you're contributing back, it's, it's appealing, because you know that you know, if it's a good idea, if it doesn't you know, break binary compatibility, things like that, that you can't, that you can't break, that it's probably going to get accepted if, if it's well done and so on. And, um, and that's good because application developers uh, like us, we help ensure that libraries are ready for real-world usage, for you know commercial applications, for um, uh, and, and for any other application that wants to come along. Uh, uh, there was something that Aaron said on, on a blog recently. He was quoting someone that said something like that: uh, "Without applications to test libraries, you, you wouldn't know if they were ready. And a lot of applications don't want to go to libraries because they don't know if they're ready. So you, you kind of have to you have to take that that track." Um, so the quick facts, just for anyone that's been sleeping, um, is that Plasma provides ways to make and arrange small graphical applets, um, and they look great too. And uh, Solid is easy platform agnostic hardware access and configuration, uh, which basically means it makes it easy to get at your hardware devices. Hooray. Uh, Phonon, media playing, and, and also recording, um, made easy, uh, very easy. So Plasma. Um, so HTML was slow. Uh, eye candy was difficult to add without making things even slower. Um, you couldn't add dynamic effects. And, and the thing is, in, in this world, when you're building this kind of an application, a multimedia application, users expect eye candy. And it, it's true for a lot of other applications, too. And you know, we're, we live in a world where um, Apple makes sure to put lots and lots of eye candy on everything. And so you know, people look at Apple and say, this is what applications should look like, and this is how they should behave. Um, and I'm sure that the three people that are using Vista uh, Ultimate would agree. Um, so, uh, so we want eye candy. You want things to look nice. Um, so Plasma came along, and it was this way that we could, you know, have these applets, and we could, you know, have things that we could, uh, you know, dynamically modify, and that we could, uh, 
you know, write graphically without having to render HTML. And so it seemed like an obvious choice. It's a Qt KD coding style, so it's very easy to pick up. Um, event driven has uh, the Q graphics view makes things fast. And Alien, uh, I'm not sure if anyone's mentioned it before. It's uh, part of Qt 4.4 that's coming out, but it's going to speed things up even more because it's going to do all the drawing directly in Qt instead of telling X or Windows or Mac to draw this, then draw that, then draw this, and then draw that. So it should speed up things even more and, and, and make graphics just fly. Um, so the context information is now freed from the sidebar uh, because we have this context view. And the context applets can be whatever shape fits context best. And they can be resize moved at will. And we still have a uh, Qt WebKit that's coming. So for things like Wikipedia, it makes sense to just render the HTML. And so we're not, you know, we still have that as, as an option if we want it. Um, so this is, a, a, this is all very pre-alpha software, um, so it doesn't look that great right now, but um, this is a view, and you can see the context is moved front and center. And when you have the media player where it, rediscover your music is, is the maxim, then it really makes sense to have the information about your music be the center pane. Um, so context is the center, and um, uh, this is a, a, a cutoff view of you know, lyrics and track information. And this is a kind of a, a thin view, and then if you make it bigger, then um, then it gets thick, and you can see everything got smaller. All the text got smaller. But when you have a view like this, then you can. W one thing that we're looking at is uh, that you can click on one and have it come out to the front, and then if you click on another, that'll come out to the front. So you can focus on something, or you can have it just all back there and available. Uh, so that answered you know that question. Uh, but what about hardware support? So Solid gives us this QTKD API. <coughs> and a back-end abstraction. So what that means is, is we, can, um, we can write device detection code, or, or rather we can write code that makes use of devices that are handed to us. So uh, Solid will say, hey, this device just appeared, and it's this type of device, and we can access it using the information that Solid gives us. And so we don't need to write that ourselves, and we don't need to write a HAL version, and we don't need to write a Windows version and a Mac version, because that'll be done for us. Um, so the API is modeled after the HAL structure because that's what was available on the free software world, but it's not just a HAL front end. Um, the most common, most useful information is there, which makes sense, um, and the information is likely to be available on all platforms. So um, if you have a uh, hard drive partition, then um, the mount point or the drive letter, if you're on Windows, um, you know that's likely to be av available on all platforms. But um, uh, you know certain things about does it support uh, I don't know, smart, which I know is on all platforms, but maybe at some point Linux can support it and Windows could. So, you know, it doesn't make too much sense. Um, the API is available across platforms. Um, hey, Windows and Mac developers watching this, uh, write the backend, please. Um, and backend specific information is still there if you want it. Um, it's just not, not portable, but if you know what backend you're on, that's fine. Um, so we don't need to code our own device detection. Um, and uh, Backend code is, you know, is maintained within KDE Lib, so there's many eyes on it. And hey, again, Windows and Mac developers, hey, pst. Um, so now on to uh, Phonon. Phonon, uh, here's our list of engines for Amrock 1.4 and, and earlier in Subversion. Acode, GStreamer, KDE MM, MAS, NMM are all deprecated and unmaintained. YAWAP, which I, I'm not actually sure how you pronounce it, but I'm guessing that's it, is uh, kind of maintained. And um, and Helix and, and, and RealPlayer and Zine are maintained. Um, but why do we have all these deprecated, unmaintained engines? Um, well, for one thing, we don't have the manpower. Um, we don't have the manpower to keep all of them up. Uh, if, if someone who coded it initially disappears, uh, the rest of us may not know that library and may not have the time to pick it up. You know, we're all, none of us are getting paid for this. Um, libraries are sometimes too limited, uh, so some of them couldn't support cross-feeding when we wanted to add that. Um, and non-C++ and especially Qt or KDE APIs make it difficult to pick these up. So we sort of recognized that this was a problem, and, and we always thought, ah, oh, we'll fix it sometime. Um, but Phonon came along and solved it for us, and we don't have to worry about um, too much. Right now, all we have to really worry about is getting Phonon the right media at the right time. Um, and it's KIO capable. So currently, the, the deprecated GStreamer backend could use KIO and all of its magic to play your files. Um, everything in Phonon can use KIO, and it's all seekable. Um, so the backends are maintained by lots of people. Um, uh, uh, Trolltech 
uh, maintain some of the backends. I was told that this is actually wrong. I, I've been told at some point that GStreamer pays for MP3 uh, licensing, but someone told me that this is wrong, so I might, I might not be uh, correct about that. But um, uh, the GStreamer backend is there, um, and it can still be added um, even if MP3 support isn't a part of GStreamer on that platform. Um, and so you have Zine and you have GStreamer, and on Windows you have Direct Show, and on Mac you have QuickTime. And, um, and these backends have many eyes again, and we don't have to worry about it ourselves. And there's this huge code reduction because Phonon is so simple. So our Zine engine had 1495 lines of code in the CPP, or, sorry, lines in the file of CPP and, and H files. The Phonon engine has 324 lines. So that's 80% less code, none of it backend specific, none of it platform specific. And uh, the Phonon engine code has more comments in white space too. Now, if you actually look at the comments in white space in those files, you'll find that there's about, even though it's a little more on the Phonon side, there's about 200 uh, lines in each file that are comments in white space. So when you look at them, when you subtract, you actually get a ratio of about 90% uh, code reduction. It, it, it's almost a ratio of 10 to 1. So going forward, um, with KDE4, KDE took all these concerns, and, and you know, they're, they're very, they, they listen to us, they like us. Um, we're part of a module called Extra Gear, so we're not packaged with KDE, but uh, several of the very prominent KDE apps are in this Extra Gear module. You have us, you have Digicam, which is an excellent photo management utility, uh, and you have, uh, uh, for instance, um, K3B, which is probably the premier uh, CD and DVD mastering application on, on free desktops. Um, and we didn't really complain specifically. I mean, we did over time, but it wasn't like one of us came to them and said, you need to do this now. You know, we didn't threaten them or anything, but they, they, they just recognized that this need was there for application developers. And, um, and so they, they answered all of it. So context, we have Plasma. Hardware, we have Solid. Engine maintenance mess, we have Phonon. And as a result, coding for AMROC 2 is, uh, is much easier in a way because we can really focus on all the really cool stuff that hasn't been done before, and we can get rid of all the, the, the customized stuff and get rid of a lot of the code that has been done before that's boring that you have to rewrite on all these other applications, on all these other platforms every single time. Um, so, you know, right now we have few reasons to remain uh, QT only, and we have lots of reasons to stick with KDE. Our, our position has done a whole 180 um, as a result of all of these, you know, nice libraries with good interfaces that, that are out there. And we have this excellent community that cannot be stressed enough of developers, supporters, and users. Um, everyone is, is extremely supportive uh, of the applications that run on KDE, all the core developers. Um, and so it's a really great environment to develop applications on. And now it's a much easier environment to develop applications on. Um, and very soon a cross-platform environment to develop applications on. And all of that's really exciting. Um, so I guess uh, we'll move on to any questions that are out there. I, I do also... I, I saw, I, no, I, I mean, I'm pretty sure that's my last slide. Yes, it is. Um, uh, I just want to point out, because I, I point out my fellow AMROCKers before, Leo right there is working on the context view, um, and he's contributed a lot back to Plasma. Um, I'll talk about that just for a moment. Um, I was talking before about how KDE listens to its application developers and how they will go and they'll, and they'll you know, uh, listen to suggestions and take patches and things like that, and they're open about that. Um, with each of these libraries that I mentioned, they, they listened to um, drawbacks and, and, and that we found, and they fixed it. So with Phonon, uh, we needed some notification ahead of time to know when a track was going to change um, so that we could load up the next track to crossfade. And we told them this, and they added it. Simple as that. Um, with Solid, uh, we, you know, we looked at the Solid API and said, well, this isn't quite good enough. And that ended up going back to HAL, and we ended up patching HAL to work with you know, and, and then and then install it to make things better. Um, and with Plasma, Plasma originally, the library, was just something that was there to uh, to service Plasma, the desktop, and its uh, applets. And it was always intended to, to be abstracted, but we basically said, hey, we really need you to do this sooner rather than later. And Leo did a whole lot of that. And, um, and Aaron did a lot of that too. And it got done. And so now you have Plasma that's capable of being embedded in any single application that you want, so you can have custom applets inside your application doing, you know, anything you can think of. And it's really brilliant stuff. Um, so, questions? Uh, sure. Um, I'll let A get you the microphone. Uh, I 
don't know. Do you have? Uh, sorry. I oh, know. <laughs> is your user community taking advantage of the possibility of writing plasmoids yet? Do, that you know of, or? Uh, I don't know too much about that. Leo, uh, can you? Yeah. Um, I think right now we're still working on the. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Hang on, hang on. Yeah. Uh, here. Oh. <laughs> um, not yet. We're still working on the framework for the whole system. Um, but if you want to, please come talk to me and start, because we are ready. Um, if you want to, there is you know, enough there for you to work on. Um, I think it's still been kind of under the radar, so no one's really heard of it yet. Um, but hopefully we can have like, a first pre-op release soon to kind of get the word out to people. But yes, so come join us. Uh, any other questions? Uh, sort of building on the same thing. Um, are you going to do something like what Dolphin did, where you can move around the different panes using plasmoids? I'm, I'm sorry, where you can move around? Um, if you've seen um, the l version of Dolphin on KDE 4, yeah. you can, uh, different views, you can move them around uh, to different parts of the window and reorganize them. Yeah, the side, the side panes and all that. Uh -huh. Would you be able to reorganize them later on? Like, do you have that planned? I, I, I don't know. Um, but we like taking ideas. So um, <laughs> one, one thing, it send, send mail to amrock at kde.org and um, you know, get that kind of stuff to our developers and to our mailing list. And you know, we can work on flushing it out. Um, we like that kind of feedback. We like to stay ahead of, of things. Yeah, I mean, if you have any ideas, um, I haven't flushed out the like, contact view too much yet, you know, even in my head. So like, I, I need more feedback to know what you think, what you want to do with it, what you think can be done with it. So talk to me, you know, send me an email, send us an email. We're very open to tips. Um, I, I, some of you, I, I, I'm sorry this wasn't an AMROC 2.0 presentation because I know some people like that, but uh, I did want to focus on the KD4 side of things. Uh, so, a great <laughs> um, thank you. Um, As we wrap up this day full of presentations and neat technology and um, a, this celebration of the KDE community, I'd like to give you a little tagline for the KDE community. We do embrace and befriend. Good to meet you, Jeff. Good Thanks. To meet you. All right, cocktails over there. <laughs>